This is Beyond a Reasonable Doubt with your hosts, Mark Garrigus and Gary Smith. GPS, how are you? I'm well, Mark. How are you? I, uh, I'm feeling a little bit more rested in the last few times we've done this. Well, that Actually, that's true, although it's been quite a week, hasn't it? It's been an extremely busy week, yes, but uh, I've I've had a... Yesterday was the first day I can truly say I feel like I didn't work in as long as I can remember. So, um, yeah, the, the, the week was very busy. We had a, a long wait for, uh, for a verdict and then we, uh, we had a very, very busy day the next day as well. So it's been quite something. How are you uh, holding up? Well, it's been quite a week from a not guilty on the first degree to a, uh, DA doing a press conference on, uh, the, um, the, Menendez brothers, which we'll discuss in a minute. Two, for our listeners, probably the most important piece of breaking news. Do you know what that is? Well, I think it's it's a matter of subjective opinion, but what what is it for you? The merch is in. The merch is in. We have the merch. That's true. There there is so much merch that I said, please, for the love of God, find somewhere else for this and do not put it in my office. So it has taken over a a vacant office uh, a few doors down from me. So, yes, the merch is in. There's quite a bit of it. We not only have uh, sweatshirts, but I believe we have T-shirts this time as well. So a, uh, a happy day for all who have been waiting, including one of our comments of the week who is threatening a... Let's see here. What does it say? A class action lawsuit. Uh, imagine if someone started a class action lawsuit against reasonable doubt because Gary never sent them the merch they won. That's from uh, Rachel Bankman, 801. And then our other winner for this week is uh, Rick 454 P who says reasonable doubt is the best makeup tutorial channel on YouTube. I know Alexandra especially appreciated that one. So uh, for both. Yeah, of- th- I was very, I, you know, the comments after the makeup tutorial for those, um, few stragglers who didn't understand it. The point of that was both figuratively and literally is that we were juggling quite a bit last week. And yeah, what those people, what those people don't understand, what those people don't understand is that we recorded a part of a jury, uh, a trial conference that we were having. Basically, Mark, Alexandria and I were in the middle of our murder trial. We were about to start closing and I desperately needed a direction on what I was doing to prep for the closing. And Mark and Alexandra graciously made some time for me. And we recorded the first 10 minutes of that 25 minute meeting and put it out as reasonable doubt because otherwise it wasn't going to happen. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure most of our listeners have not participated in a murder trial, but as you are preparing for closing, it's a high stress environment and it's something that you need all the time you can get with the attorneys involved and with the client and with everybody. And we did not have a lot of time. So we decided to record the first 10 minutes of what was very precious time that we used to prep for our closing. And I will say for anyone who has comments about the makeup tutorial, I I don't know what to tell you. This podcast is not expensive to listen to. And uh, I was in the office at seven the next morning, which was a Sunday. We recorded on a Saturday evening. So if you have comments about the podcast, by all means, go to YouTube and type to your heart's content. We love the comments. Uh, yeah. I, like I say, snark, I we love. Clever, we love. But if you're going to be one of the um, the haters, um, at least be clever about it. Yes, right? agreed. Uh, absolutely. And to be honest with you guys, for those who are clever about it, after our jury went to deliberate on, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, uh, we had a large lunch in the office with about 10 people, many of whom are not known to the audience. And we sat there during lunch reading all the YouTube comments. The ones that were funny all got read and the whole office laughed about it. So they, they are not ignored, but uh, and they are, you know, fodder for our enjoyment. But the ones that aren't funny, just, you know, fall by the wayside. Yep, that's exactly right. So. Let's talk about uh, Menendez because quite a turn of events after almost 35 years, the DA came out uh, and announced that they on third, I believe it was Thursday. It was Thursday. Yeah, that he was going to, um, Mr. Gascon was going to recommend uh, that they be resentenced. Friday, they filed the document that formally requests a resentence. So now we're waiting to get a date, which I hope will be sooner rather than later. 
he's recommending the um the uh taking away this special circumstance and uh doing a what's called a first degree murder which and 50 to life which would make them instantly eligible for parole i'm going to ask uh you know coming attractions i'm going to ask that the judge recall the sentence and uh uh sentence to a lesser included which is a voluntary manslaughter and deem that uh, time be served so it'll be an interesting hearing uh you know part of the gratifying part of the job uh is when you have and we did a press conference after the DA's press conference and had well, virtually all of the family. There's only one kind of crazy uncle that uh, isn't in support. Other than that, everybody led by Joan, who is Kitty's older sister, uh, has um, uniformly uh, given their not only blessing, but is heartened by this. So uh, it's to see their reactions and to see that they've actually got hope at this point is quite gratifying. Yeah. For anyone who was watching the uh, press conference that uh, DA Gascon did on Thursday was scheduled to start at one 30. Uh, I was among the group that started watching it, you know, one twenty-five, and uh, you guys got a lot of screen time because he didn't start until about five minutes after two. So the, uh, the first 35 minutes or so of KTLA's coverage, at least, which is the channel I was watching on was a lot of you and Alex and Brian and a, a bunch of, uh, Holly, a bunch of members of our, our team just, uh, being shot by the cameras because they frankly didn't have much else to point at. And Joan was amongst the, uh, the people in the crowd who they were sort of shooting at the back of her head. I don't think anyone, but maybe me and you would recognize her from the shots they had because she was sitting facing the podium, but, um, you guys got a lot of screen time. Well, uh, I would have preferred less screen time because it was so hot in there. Oh, I, I, I don't know. The HVAC in the Hall of Justice in that particular room is not the best. they sweating like pigs. And we had Joan sitting there who's 92. Uh, and uh, what a beautiful uh, woman she is. And what a what a just compelling uh, person she is. I, mean, I, I spent both in the conditional exam and um, in several times since with her and talked to her frequently and, and very eloquent for her age too. She also spoke at the press conference that you guys had about 10 days ago, uh, sort of asking, uh, Gascon to go ahead and make the decision that he ultimately ended up making. And she got up there and, uh, despite her, you know, at the end of her remarks, apologizing for the fact that she was having trouble reading her statement. I, I thought she was wildly eloquent and well-spoken for a, a lady of her age. I believe she turns 93 this coming month, correct? Correct. Uh, literally uh, just out of serendipity, the day on the habeas that the DA's reply is due, which is separate from this resentencing, is her birthday, um, which is amazing. And, and I thought maybe I'd get it a little bit into the weeds because I've heard a lot of interpretations of what's going on that aren't exactly legally accurate. And since we are nominally a legal show, I thought I'd talk about it. The the habeas, as I mentioned, is what's been pending for a year and a half. Um, months ago, I had sent over after the first of the year the um, a proposal to the DA's office, which was called an invitation to resentence. And the reason we did that is because under the law, and I won't get into the too much into the weeds, but the the way the statute is written on resentencing in California, the either the judge or the DA as of 2024 can initiate the resentencing. And there's various nuances depending on if it's judge initiated or DA initiated. And I wanted to give the DA the opportunity to uh, initiate it for a number of reasons. And that's why uh, I was welcomed that they did it now. I know there's a you know a lot of people. You know it, it's ironic that people are saying it's political. Uh, you know the the only political thing about this so far uh, is that there is a one of Gascon's opponents, his only opponent in the runoff uh, for next week, is endorsed by the lawyer. Uh, or a lawyer who I know and and say 
I don't know if she would find it uh, offensive or not, but I would call her a disgruntled ex-DA, one of the coterie of DAs who uses Marcy law, Marcy's law uh, nominally as a victim's advocate. Uh, really, it's for political purposes, in my humble opinion. And she is uh, coincidentally the, found the one relative out of the tr- 20 or 30 some odd who are in support of this in order to advocate uh, a position which is anti-Gascon. The facts are that they have engaged in this since before there was a runoff, before there was election. As you will know, Gary, because you were an eyewitness to it, Joan, who we've been talking about, actually the DA's office last year had agreed to what's called a conditional examination of Joan that was done in the courtroom and the courtroom at engine. Yes. Our, our mock courtroom at our office. I, that was at the uh, end of December of last year. And yes, I participated and helped record that, that conditional hearing. Right. And so uh, anybody says, oh, well, this is, you know, something a last minute to hail Mary. No, they've been engaged all along. The judge had issued an, o, an OSC or an, a request for an informal reply, and the DA has assiduously worked and requested more information. We provided that with them, and they've done a lot of work on this, and they've done a lot of work, and they've come to a reasoned decision. And you ask why now? They were getting inundated post Netflix, Ryan Murphy, post Fox Nation, post you know documentary. With people, by the way, a lot of whom were kind of the backlash from the Ryan Murphy uh, uh, documentary. Yeah, the reporting on this has been um, laughable at most turns. There have been a few people who have gotten things right or or largely right. But um, the the reporting on this, that this is, you know, having to do with the fact that Gascon is down in the polls. It's just it's blatantly untrue. I mean, anyone who listens to this podcast knows that in one degree or another, we've been at this for close to two years. So it's the fact that it's now got to do with the poll numbers. I mean, we recorded that conditional hearing, uh, that conditional examination before we did the Los Angeles magazine sponsored Los Angeles district attorney's debate. I mean, that was four weeks before that debate. So the idea that this has to do with the polls, sure, certainly possible. But the fact that that is the motivating factor is just not rooted in reality. Right. And, uh, you know, so that, like I say, it's uh, it's ironic. Those who are accusing uh, the DA of being political are actually the ones who are being political. And uh, that's uh, too bad. And by the way, there is a certain degree of irony that they got caught up originally in trial number two in DA politics back then, eight days after the OJ verdict of not guilty. The evidence started in the trial number two. The judicial rulings changed. The DA was taking a completely different position after more than half of the two juries had voted not guilty on murder in the first trial. And now, once again, kind of DA politics are being caught up in this as well. Uh, 30, 30 years later, I guess, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Uh, it is hard to believe that 35 years later, we're doing the uh, same version of a, or a different version of the same dance. And, you know, it's also interesting. I mean, the one thing that people, uh, what I have said, there's, uh, you know, why did, why, why should there be a change? Well, number one, there's been an evolution, mind you, in the 90s a battered woman syndrome, which could be used to negate the specific intent, which or the malice uh, forethought and could negate the malice to reduce a homicide from a murder to a voluntary manslaughter. Battered woman syndrome applied and, and that kind of thinking and to negate malice applied in trial number one. Trial number two, the DA made the argument that it did not apply to abuse of children. I mean, you know, that would be wouldn't be laughable. It'd be tragic if you argued it down. And if you look at the old videos of the trial itself and trial number one, they were even arguing that men couldn't be raped. Boys couldn't be raped. 
yeah, it's it's just a different world in terms of the way that we uh, analyze and interpret abuse uh, from then till now. And, you know, you say the 90s, that is when the trials were. But, you know, the the crime itself was back in the 80s. I mean, this was this was a lifetime ago. I mean, I this was, you know, around the time that I was a, a very young child. So the uh, year were you born? I was born in 84. So you were five years old. Yeah. Yes, I was. And uh, I'm turning 40 this year and it's uh, a wildly different world, you know, just in, in many ways. And, and it's been, I would say three or four different worlds throughout the course of my lifetime. So the fact that we've come to a, a new place now is, is certainly something where reexamination is warranted. And, you know, I, maybe this is some recent bias of my own, but um, you know, I, I've had some very recent experience with juries and um, wow. Uh, the, wild, the, right? <laughs> it's wild. We are four or five days out and there are still at least two or three and, and one major thing that I just, I can't get past. And uh, I am, I am just a little bit stunned and knowing that everyone's fallible. Um, the, there were some things that I've experienced that I just uh, can't quite wrap my, my mind around. Yeah. So it's a, uh, it's a, case study in human nature, I guess, is the best way to put it. So it'll be an interesting week coming uh, coming up, and I'll give you a uh, uh, a preview before uh, next Sunday. I think before next Sunday, we'll have a date for the hearing, and uh, we'll address that next Sunday. Well, I'm very much looking forward to that. And uh, we will we are also, what, under two weeks away from the uh, presidential election. So a lot of news to cover there as well, I'm sure, as uh, as everything develops. And uh, we will be... I know next Sunday is going to be wild, in, in my opinion. So uh, we've got the final closing week here. And, uh, and I think that we're going to have legal stories after the election nonstop. So stay tuned. Buckle up. All right. Looking forward to it, Mark. Thank you so much for making some time on a Sunday. And this is being recorded on a Sunday. So if it's dropping a little later than you're used to, our apologies. We got into a Saturday recording habit, but this week didn't work out. So it's being recorded on a Sunday and I will get it out just as fast as I possibly can. Thanks, GPS. Thanks, Mark. Be well. Thanks for listening to Reasonable Doubt. Subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash reasonable doubt podcast.